Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to show a test that is a model bus TCP communication test. I will use the Alan Bradley Complex Logics run as a model bus TCP client. And from the Siemens side, I will use i7-1200 controller run as a model bus TCP server. And in this test, I will now start from the scratch. I showed a couple videos how can we set up the model bus TCP server from the Siemens side and how can we set up the model bus TCP client function from the Alan Brunley side. You can check out the video before. I will paste a link under this video. In this video, I will mainly focus on the test to show Alan Brunley and the Siemens they can use the model bus TCP and the Siemens side run as a server. The Alan Brunley side run as a client they can get the communication using the Modbus TCP. Okay, from the Siemens TI portal side, we use this Modbus server function block. To find out this server function block, we can find out the instruction, find out the communication, this instruction group, go to the others, go to the Modbus TCP, find out this Modbus server, drag it out, we can program like this. And from this connection setting, so we use this DB20. So Modbus TCP connection setting. And we have a parameter setting here. So we use this state type tcom underscore ip underscore v4. And we expand this. And this interface ID, that is a 64. That come from our hardware if we reveal the device configuration. If we click this uh, Ethernet port, this Modbus TCP server, this PLC, its IP address is 1.201. And from this system constants, we can see this Ethernet interface is hardware identifier that is 64. This 64 date type is HWANY. So that's why we put this 64 at here. So interface ID 64 here and connection ID, we type in the number one. If we have a multiple connection, you can follow this number one, two, three, four, okay? And because this PLC will run as a Modbus TCP server, so this active established, so we will turn this off, false. And this connection type, that value is 11, and the hex number this is a zero B. We will use the TCP because Modbus TCP based on this uh, TCP IP communication. So we select the 11 here. And we will set this Modbus TCP server is local port, that's the 502. Okay. And because we are running as a server, so this remote address, we do not need to care about that. And this is the setting. From the server side, this is very easy. And where is a data buffer to store the Modbus TCP data. So that comes from this DB, DB12. If we open this Modbus DB12, open it, I create this MB server, this variable, this uh, array. And this array is length is 120, I declare like this, and it start from the number one. So here, if we start from the number one, and if we are testing the Modbus TCP function, that's 03 and uh, 16 that read and write by using the holding register. So this address that will represent the 40,001. This is a two, three, four. This will follow this index number like this. They will match, okay? And keep in mind that holding register, that every register that is one word. So this unit that is a word. So I import. So when you use it here, this is the hold register here. Okay, and to monitor this data, I set up the watch list. And if we open this watch table, this is the MB TCP data, this data DB, and that's the MB server. So it starts from the index one. Okay, now this server side is ready. We can save the project, compile, and download the project to the controller. and we can start this monitor. And let's shift to the Alan Brownlee side. And from this Alan Brownlee side, I'm using the 1769 L33, this compact logics controller. And this controller will run as a Modbus TCP client. And 
To implement the client function, we need to download the AOI function from Rockwell Automation website. You can search Motobus TCP, and then you will search that AOI function. And after we download, so we can go to the run. So we can from this run, right click, click this import, and import the Motobus TCP client that run L5X, that file, okay? And then let's review some key important parameters. So let's go to the connection and right click this uh, parameters and click the monitor. And expand these parameters. So here the local slot that's zero, that means we are using this built-in, this ethernet port because we are using the complex logics. So from here, it shows index zero. We are using the built-in Ethernet port. And this local address we will leave as empty. And this destination address, here we need to type in the remote that server side IP address. And our server, the Siemens controller, that IP address is 1.201. Keep in mind this, this is the server side IP address. And the destination port, like I just showed from the server side setting, that port number is a 502. Okay, so this is the client setting. This client will find this server and this port. And from this transaction, so we are using two transactions. The first transaction, zero, we enable that, and this pooling interval we set 200 milliseconds. And this trans type, that is the model bus function. That is zero 03. That means we will read the data from the server to this client. Use this transaction. Okay, so this beginning address we set a zero, and this local address we set one. This local address and the beginning address we can match them. They both can set one. However, this is Alan Bradley, its local address is start from the zero rather than one. But the model bus TCP communication is holding registered address start from the 40,001. So that's why here we have a one value off here. We set a zero here and a set a one at here. This is the reading data. So it's lens, we read 10 lens. And from this second transaction, enable this transaction, pulling interval, we still set a 200 milliseconds. And this transition type here, we set a 16. That is the function code from the Motobus TCP. So the 16 means we will write the data from the client side to the server side, and we will write the data into the holding register, that 40,000, this register area. And we will start from the 21. And because that one address off, so this beginning address we will type in the 20, and this local address we will type in the 21. And this counter we will use 10 counters as a test. So this writing buffer is length is 10, okay? And this transit complete, so we can watch this feedback result. If it's showing one, that means this is correct. Okay, this is a communication setting. And if we go back and come here and click this Modbus data, and this is the buffer that mapping with the Modbus. So in this test, we are using the function 03 and the 16 that will read or write the data from this holding address. And the Motobus holding register this address using the 40,000 address, okay? And we can see from the Alan Brownlee side, it start from the zero. So comparing with the Motobus TCP register address, it will have a one value off. So we will see that, okay? From this client side, let's download, click this communication, select the controller, and our client is IP address is 1.101, and the server side is 1.201, okay? Download. So once this controller started, we will see this status connected, that shows that connected. So once it started, let's go browse this data area. Let's click this monitor, Modbus data. So from this transaction zero is reading data, and this transaction one is writing the data. 
So if we need to send the data from this client to the server, so we can operate the 21, that area, that mode bus TCP address. So if we scroll up and expand this data, holding register this area, let's go here from this 21 here. So we can change this type hex. So here we can write 1122-3344-5566. And because its length is 10, so the last data should be at here. So this is 30 here. So here we can prepare data, for example, AABB. And here, for testing purpose, we can write the data here, CCDD. So this 31 should not be sent to the server side. OK, let's go to the server side. And from this server side, this index from number one that match with the Modbus TCP register holding address, that is a 40,001, two, three, four, like this. So, and from the client side, it's writing the data as this Modbus 40,021. So we can see this is the first data, 1122, 3344, 5566, right? And the last data, and its length is 10. So from here to here, this is a 10 data here. And that CCDD will now be sent because the length is 10. Okay, now at here, we can prepare the data. So here we can prepare the 1234, 5678, and A, B, C, D. We prepare those three data here. And in the meantime, we can go to this FC20 and he's a monitor and let's watch this status. So this server shows 7006. That means this status is correct. If we hit the F1, this is the help of the Modbus server. So if we scroll down and click this status and we can see this is 7006. That means data is being received. That means this communication is correct. Okay. Let's shift to the Alan Brownlee side. Let's watch if the client receives those data correctly. Okay, as we can see, because we did that one off from the setting side, so that makes this number one match with the mode bus TCP. So that first data, one, two, three, four, second, five, six, seven, eight, and third, A, B, C, D. So we skip this zero. This index one that match with the mode bus TCP holding register address that 40,001, okay? If we quickly reveal the setting we did, this local address, we start from the one, and this beginning address, we minus one. The ideally it should be one, that is the same as this, but we minus one. That makes this a, that makes this a index number match with the Modbus TCP register address. And from this transaction one, it's the same thing. So this beginning address, this is 20. And this local address, this is 21. Here, this 20 will minus one from this 21 here. That makes that index number matching with the Modbus TCP register address. And the length is 10. And this transaction complete signal, it shows one. That means it's communicating there, okay? And if we go back to this client, that means the communication, they are correct, okay? And here I would like to show, so we can see this status shows overlap. Sometimes it's turned on here. And from this menu explanation, and from this menu, Modbus TCP client add-on instruction. And we can find out the page 16. And here that status overlap shows the indicate that one or more transaction is not completing before the next trigger. So the reason why the result shows overlap that because so from this transaction, if we monitor the transaction, this is enable, we need to use the sequence or use a simple toggle signal. Basically, these two transactions should not turn on at the same time. Basically, we can do a simple transaction. For example, this turn on 500 milliseconds and this turn on 500 milliseconds and then do this cycle. Now I'm enable them at the same time. That's why here it shows status overlap. 
So I especially want to show this case. So when you implement this client function, you must very carefully about this. All right, this is the model bus TCP communication between the Allen Branley and the Siemens. So in this test, the Allen Branley run as a model bus TCP client. This is the master. And the Siemens controller side, this is the model bus TCP server. Slave side, I used another video to show we reverse this role. So Allen Branley run as a server and the Siemens side run as a client. So basically using these two video, we verify using the model bus TCP, we can do the communication between these two brands. As we know, the Siemens use the Perfinite and Allen Branley side is using the Ethernet IP. This is a two different protocol, but in case on site, we need to set up the communication between those two systems so we can use the model bus TCP. And good things is that to implement the AOI from the Allen Branley side and the Siemens side, we do not need to purchase additional hardware and additional software package. Those are built-in function. There's no any additional cost here. All right, that's it for today. So model bus TCP communication between the Siemens and the Allen Branley. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.